Hello everybody, Forex here with another tutorial. In this video I'm going to show you how to work with cameras. If you've already watched my previous videos about intro creation where I was talking about automatic camera scripts like camera.sqs or splendid camera for AMA3, you can still find this video very interesting because I want to talk about manually created cameras. So basically we'll make a new custom camera from scratch, we'll define where it should be and how it should move. I'm also going to explain you what's the difference between this and the automatic camera scripts and near the end I also want to show you some of the most common movements that I have prepared for you. Alright, so first of all we'll create some testing mission. We'll only need a couple of units, I will use the player's unit, one infantry unit and one vehicle. And we'll move the camera around these objects. I will name all of them, so we'll be working with objects named player, soldier and car. These names will eventually have to be used in a command, so it's definitely a good idea to give a name to important objects in the mission. Alright, once the objects are in place, we can save the mission and leave the editor. We can do most of the work outside the editor itself, we'll make a simple script, so leave the editor and next we'll make a script camera.sqf and open it. Ok, I'm not working in the basic Windows Notepad, I'm using Notepad++ because it can look better with longer code and because why not basically. So anyway, let's start by making a custom camera, something that I already described in another video. So make a local variable and make an imaginary camera for it. So underscore camera equals to camera cam create some position. We'll use the coordinates 000. Next line, we need to give the camera a default effect so that it can work properly. And we want to work with the same camera, so underscore camera, camera effect, brackets, internal, comma, back, brackets. Now we have a camera that doesn't move or focus on anything, but it already exists. Next, we'll want to move the camera to a place that makes more sense, so that we can start making a cutscene. For the first shot, we'll move the camera behind the player's unit and have it focus on the player as well. Underscore camera, cam set post, brackets, Position player select 0, comma, position player select 1, minus 5, comma, 4. We can use a solid 4 for the height for now. That moves the camera for us to the right position. Underscore camera, camp set target player. You can either target a unit or an object, or you can target a location. In this example, we want to target the player's unit, so we can leave it like that. Alright, the last thing we need to do here is to confirm the commands and tell the game to execute them. Cameras work in a slightly different way than other commands, as you know if you execute a command, it will immediately do what it's supposed to. Cameras on the other hand, wait until your confirmation to show the changes. So right now, the game makes a camera at the coordinates 000, and the last two commands tell the camera to prepare for a new location, which is defined by the position of player's unit. The camera doesn't actually move there, it just knows about the new location and waits for your confirmation. So we'll do that by writing underscore camera cam commit zero. With this command we have told the camera to move to the last defined position and target on player's unit. In a more general sense we tell the camera to apply previously defined changes, be it a target location, camera location, zoom or anything else. I'll get to the advantage in a second, now please remember that the cam commit is related only to the commands that were executed before. That's a very important thing. So if I take this example, with three different camera locations, the first cam commit affects the initial camera position that is set up right here above it. The second camera location isn't confirmed by cam commit, so it's not executed at all. And the third location is again correctly introduced by a cam commit. You should be able to see the results of this script on the screen right now. Note that the second camera position is indeed excluded and there is no visible change until the cam commit is executed. Now if you look at the script generated by automatic camera function, the camera sqs that I talked about in the previous camera related video, the commands generated there are a bit different. And that is, instead of cam set pause or cam set target, they use cam prepare pause and cam prepare target. These commands are identical in use. The only difference is that cam set pause indicates that we are moving a camera 
and can prepare pulse indicates that we are only preparing for a change and need more commands to actually move. The camera function also uses the cam set FOV which is basically the zoom of the camera. Alright, now there is one thing that cam commit allows us to do and it's maybe one of the most important things for any scene creation. The command allows the user to make fluent automatic changes in camera position or target over a specified period of time. This explanation or definition I came up with is confusing and maybe not even correct. But what I'm trying to say is that the command lets you to choose the time that it takes the camera to move from the old position to the new one. That means that if you pick a positive number in seconds, the camera will actually move in real time to the new location or it will focus on a new object or location. That can be used to create fluent movement of the camera without the need of jumping from one place to another. The camera always chooses the most direct path to the new place and calculates the speed needed to reach that place in time. This is all done automatically right after the command is executed, so the movement is always consistent with every new change to the camera coordinates. Ok, so these are the camera commands that you need to make almost any cutscene. Most of the needed movements can be created only with these few commands and, if needed, a few other command statements. I have included several common examples in the video description and I'm also going to show some of them on the screen here. Of course, the other commands that can be used are also often very important if you have a specific goal. However, it's difficult for me to mention all of them because every camera shot needs different approach and what can work in one situation and create the desired effect can turn terribly wrong in a different situation. So instead of trying to cover all possible variations of camera shots, I have decided to pick several important commands and statements that I feel can be used in most of the situations. Of course, we have the well-known constructs if, then, else and while do. And that can help us with making a loop for the commands. These can be used in some situations. The while do structure may be less so as it's often not really required and could eventually even be bad for the code, but certainly they both can be used. The usual wait until command for each and other stuff can also be used and divide individual commands into blocks that can be used as you need. You can for example wait until something specific happens before you move on with the camera or you can base the next camera shot on something that the player did in a scenario. So for example, if the player completed all side objectives, you can offer an extra shot in the final cutscene or something like that. Another command that you might use one time is set dir, which lets you to choose the camera's direction without specifically focusing on an object or a location. Again, you may not need this command in any of your missions. On the other hand, there may be a situation where this is your best option. So it's your choice whether you use it or you rather pick something else. I repeat, in many cases one thing can be done in multiple ways so you aren't always limited only to one command. If you think about the problem and try a different approach, you may even end up with a better result. So always try to consider your options. For example, you can quickly turn the camera around with set dir without any focus on an object or you can move the camera to a chosen spot and focus a logic unit to turn it around. There are more camera rotations that can be done with commands set vector up and set vector dir. I haven't really mentioned these commands yet in my videos, but basically they are used to rotate an object in various different ways. So if used correctly, you can set the camera's pitch, bank and rotation. So customize in all three dimensions, pretty useful if you really want to customize the camera to the finest details or if you want to simulate more complex movements. Again, may be useful but not required if you don't want to. Also, cameras can be attached to an object by the command attach to. That can be used to follow practically anything you want. If the object moves too quickly and the camera shakes way too much, of course try some workarounds. Attach a logic unit to the original object and attach the camera to the logic unit. Or you could also use the next command that I'm about to mention, the cam set rel pos. To set up camera's relative position to an object of your choice. The camera's relative position is calculated from the target's position marked by cam set target. After you are done with all camera shots, you can easily end the cutscene by destroying the camera. First, use the ending effect, 
underscore camera camera effect terminate comma back and the second command is just destroying the camera cam destroy underscore camera. This will end the cutscene, return the player back to his unit and destroys the camera. Now you should be able to make practically any camera shot by yourself. Of course you will have to try to make the final script by yourself, but with this video it should be much easier for you to find the needed command for every moment of your cutscene. And as promised, you should be able to see some basic camera movements that I have already prepared for you. So if you really don't want to bother with scripting, you can just use these as they are already prepared for an easy use in any mission. I recommend you to check out the pastebin page, which will be in the video description below, where you can find all commands mentioned in the video, including camera creation, setting up a position, additional commands that can be used with cameras, and some examples, and of course, all of these scripted movements, and maybe I'll even add something more, some variations and other examples. I also wanted to briefly mention the difference between this and automatic camera scripts, like camera.sqs, splendid camera in a way, or some camera related mods, that allow you to do pretty much exactly the same thing, only it looks much more convenient since you just fly around and pick specific spots for your camera instead of trying to figure out something in a script where you can't really predict how the final shot will look. I won't divide these two methods as they accomplish the same thing by doing almost exactly the same thing. If you look at the generated code by the game, it contains the very same commands that we used here. So the only difference here is in the method itself. Relying on camera functions and making the cutscene directly in-game is perfect for still shots and slow transitions where you need to emphasize the camera's position and the final image. Script-made cameras may not be exactly in the perfect spot, but they can move much more freely as every position change is, is defined by you in the script. That gives you the final result. The best is to use both of these methods. You can select the best place with an in-game camera, convert the coordinates into something that can be better used in scripts, like variables, and then change these to your liking in a script, effectively moving the camera exactly how you want. Alright, I think there's not much else to add, we could practice some more simple camera scripting in a future Let's Make video if you wish, but I think that this should be enough for now. So that's it for this video, I hope to see you all in the next one, comment, like and share, and have a great day.